Yo everybody, Mobile Gamers Unite here, FTC Compliant Vid for Adults. So we're going to talk about Yu Yu Hakusho, uh, we got the characters, finally, um, very happy to pull them. I was at 80 pulls saved for the next banner, but you know what, <laughs> I've been talking this banner up so much that um, I figured I would break one of my core rules, which is not to pull for dupes. I did pull for dupes and I did get uh, a second Kurama, which I'm actually very happy about. Kurama is one of these characters who I think can be a monster. I'm obviously trying different builds and different equipment on him. Um, you know, you can go with the Miracle Staff and have him be more crowd control friendly, or you can go with, um, I believe, what is this, Aseroth? Astaroth? Uh, you can go with this if you want him to be uh, more of a single target uh, killer character. So I think there's some confusion there. A lot of people seem to think that this character can only do some crowd control stuff. Um, that's just not the truth. If you look at his demonic plants ability, um, this does 1.3 damage, right? And that doesn't sound like that much, so people kind of overlook this. But what you have to realize is, well, let's just read through it. It, do, it does 1.3 times damage and applies Demonic Seed. After taking action next turn, applies fixed damage. Now, even if somebody's immune to fixed damage, you're still going to use this. All right? Because um, the, bottom, the very bottom here, when attacked by this Demonic Plant skill, magic defense is reduced by 50%. When in Yoko state, Yoko is the demon transformation, this skill gains a plus one range and soldiers can attack alongside. When we really start to factor all that in, your, your enemy's getting, um, you know, minus 50% to his magic defense. Now, this guy's only doing a 1.3 times attack, but he also has sorceresses, which is obviously one of the best choices for troops for him these troops do so much damage on their own that with his you know 1.3 times attack uh, ignoring 50% magic defense with the sorceresses it's a game changer like he will take people out on top of that um, because it's a three range um, attack skill with the Yoko ability um, the sorceresses get to actively attack three blocks away, so it becomes very potent. He can hit people with that, and uh, they can't even retaliate against him. So definitely, uh, I was very surprised with this character because, um, you know, not only does he have the crowd control thing, but he has this, this, this kind of assassination move built in, and I really like that. On top of that, um, I really thought, I mean, his his transformation ability is only a two turn. I think use case is a three turn. And I thought it'd be more of a hindrance than it really is, but here's the thing. After your two turns are up, uh, you cannot counter attack for two turns. But he can still keep his AoE Rose Whip Thorn ability up around him. And he can still dish out plenty of fixed damage and do plenty of crowd control, even if he's just running around. So there's a ton of possibilities with this character. Um, there's a lot of different things I have to try. Obviously, he has big, big cooldowns, six turns, six turns. And I have clock on him right now. But I think as plant manipulation goes up, his talent, when you star him up... I don't know if clock's going to be necessary anymore. It's going to be interesting to see because if you can swap clock out for something else that, you know, adds a little bit more to his uh, damage and stuff like that, that's interesting. Or you can just keep clock. Personally, I love it when clock goes off and I get to just keep using Rose Whip Thorn. Um, but yeah, as far as building him, the way that I see it with his equipments between these two staffs, because you're either going to want to use the Rose Whip Thorn and you're going to want to do an AoE and hopefully score some debuffs on everybody before you lay down the fixed damage. Or you can go with Azeroth, whatever staff, and um, you know that way when he does that single target plant attack, um, even if he doesn't kill the opponent, 
it has a good chance of what stunning them. I think it's a 30% chance that the uh, whoever you're attacking gets stunned, which can be very good for Krama because you kind of want to keep him out of hand-to-hand uh, -hand combat if you can. He's great to park next to a tank. Um, other than that, I just got Death's Robe on him. I don't know, you know if this is staying. I think Tenyo's will stay on him. The way this character uh, works... Tenyo's works really good on him because he's going to be in the mix with your characters trying to work from the shadows and it's nice to have him be able to give them buffs. So I like Tenyo's. I think that's staying on him. Uh, the star earring, you know, honestly I just put this thing on here because it gives intelligence. Ultimately I want his intelligence as high as possible so I can really test how good his fixed damage really can be. Um, it is uh, a stat based stat, uh, fixed damage, stat based fixed damage, so it is applicable to dragons and stuff like that, so it is pretty useful, but I do really need to get this guy um, built up so I can really see how effective he is. I'm just kind of giving you guys a stat report, but I think this character is very interesting. Um, I think there's a lot of different things you can do with him. Now of course for soldiers, thank goodness he got sorceresses. They didn't give any of these characters any of the new um, soldiers because that would just be OP. It wouldn't be fair. That's the way I look at it. They added the new units um, to give to our older heroes so that they can have troops that you know kind of power creep them a little bit to catch up to these heroes which are super powerful and that's why they kind of use our basic troops but I'm more than happy uh, running Kurama with the sorceresses. I just think that's great. Um, so right now I'm pretty much just trying to figure out how I want to set him up for more crowd control or you know to be kind of a tank buster. Speaking of tank busters, we have Mr. Yusuke Urameshi right here. Um, Yusuke is stronger out of the box right off rip. He doesn't really need to rely on his talent that much. Um, I, I should mention Kurama. I, I wasn't too upset at getting a dupe of Kurama because Kurama does really need to get started up. The whole plant manipulation thing, it takes um, cooldowns off of his abilities. So that's why I was saying about the whole clock thing, I want to wait till this guy's start up to see if I even really need clock on him. Because if he can reduce his cooldowns enough with his talent, eh, maybe I'll roll a different rune set for him. Uh, Yusuke, on the other hand, he comes very powerful out of the box. Um... You know, he gets, when there are allied units within two blocks, attack and defense, great. When there, when an allied unit dies, restore 15% hit points and gain anger. All stats except for hit points increased by 10%. Mobility plus one and unit range plus one for one turns. That's amazing. That also gives Yusuke a three, uh, three block uh, attack with his spirit gun because this is a two range obviously after somebody dies and partner power his talent triggers then this becomes a three block range um, great attack does good damage his soldiers get to attack they deal thirty percent more damage that thirty percent is huge by the way um, Lana does thirty percent more damage with her spells and she does some of the most potent magic damage in the game so just having that thirty percent more extra damage there is just huge. It's kind of like what Lana gets to with her spells, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so, and this can be shot three blocks. That's really cool. Um, I think that's one of the biggest ways this guy can just take tanks out. Um, even tanks like Landius have to look out for this guy because Landius can't necessarily retaliate against Yusuke. If Yusuke is attacking with an attack that can reach three blocks, and Landius can only retaliate um, two blocks. He's not going to be able to hit Yusuke back at all. Right? On top of that, his other ability, uh, Harder Strike Punch. Apparently, this is when he punches harder. Um, attacks a single enemy, dealing 1.3 damage. All damage taken by this unit before battle is reduced by 20%. So that's awesome. So if you're like attacking something that's very powerful and it's going to hit you back very hard this is going to soften that blow a little bit and then for one turn if you're in your transformation state this skill deals 30 percent more damage again we love that 30 percent 
and damage taken is reduced by 20%. After successfully eliminating the target, the cooldown is reduced by two turns and it's only a three turn cooldown. This is a great move to finish people off with and bank off of all that extra defense that you get. On top of that, it's important to know that this guy's transformation, um, let's see, I do believe it, yeah, it lasts for three turns. So unlike Kurama, he gets to hold on to his transformation for three turns, so he has access to, um, to the spirit gun, the extra range on that for three turns, right? And if you kill somebody with a spirit gun, your cooldown is reduced by two, and it's only a three turn cooldown for both of his abilities. So as long as you get the killing blow, you can probably use that ability again before your transformation wears off. So on top of that, there's just a ton of healing, right? There's healing everywhere. Uh, as soon as he transforms, recovers 30% hit points. Um, you know, and then if you have his best in slot weapon, which I happen to have, uh, Memories War Axe works so well for him because between his healing, the healing you get from Memories War Axe, I don't even know if I need the red ribbon. I'm still messing around with that. I might take that out, put something in there that can maybe break an enemy. But this dude's healing is just off the chain. Like, he gets to heal 30% of the damage that he does. Uh, of course, a lot of this is when he's in transformation mode, but for three turns at a time, I mean, I can totally see why this guy's so powerful out of the box. And Karama, um, yeah, he definitely does catch up, Like, uh, but you do have to start him up. And I, I think I'm going to have a lot of fun with Karama. He just looks sweet. I love his mechanic. And Yusuke is, of course, a favorite. So this is the reason why I broke my golden rule of, you know, trying to pull a dupe. I said to myself, I wouldn't mind having Yusuke at a four star. It would just be cool because he's just so wicked. And then, of course, Karama kind of needs to be at a four star so you can really kind of see what he's all about. Really, I think he needs to be at a six star to be actually effective. But hey, we got these characters now. I got something to do. Got something to build. This is, a, um, this is a great addition to Heroes of Time. I've been having a lot of fun with Heroes of Time, trying to run different combinations. I can run the two tank girls and Yusuke, and I mean, it's just, it's just really awesome, I gotta say. Um, my uh, Joshua is built up. I do like using Joshua's fusion power because... I mean, obviously Sakura banks off of it so much, and I have so much invested in her. Also, um, Yusuke, he only really benefits off of his fusion power. Like, he's only going to get that 15% more damage from his own fusion power because it's with single target skills. But Kurama here, um, since Rose Whip Thorn is an AoE, his AoE does get augmented by Joshua's fusion power. So that's part of the reason why I'm trying out the Miracle Staff to see if I can actually get a little bit better damage um, out of the AoE and throw some debuffs using Joshua's fusion power. And for the most part, right now, um, Joshua is using a fusion power and Yusuke is banking off of that. And instead of bringing Yusuke's fusion power, I would rather bring both of his attack abilities yeah, he's not going to get that 15% more damage. Where is he? I lost him already. He's not going to get the 15% more damage because, um, obviously, he's not bringing his fusion power. But at least Joshua's fusion gives him increased stats. So, how did I go over the... He's right here. How did I go over this guy so many times? It's ridiculous. Um... <clears throat> Yeah, if we look at his fusion power, I have it, but I don't equip it. I just don't, I think, you know, I don't want somebody like Yusuke fusion buffing. Instead, I can be throwing up his transformation and getting ready for battle. I want him to use somebody else's fusion because having both of these abilities at the same time, I feel is so beneficial that I will give up the 15% more damage that he would have got off of bringing this fusion power for himself. On top of that, this fusion power doesn't really, uh, let's see, it benefits some people, like, 
Obviously, Leonhardt's not going to benefit from it at all. Sakura can, but I would rather bring Sakura's AoEs. Um, Estelle can't. Uh, Tank Girl can't. So really, um, you know, like a lot of these characters, yeah, they have single target skills that they can bring. But most of the time, I don't want to bring those. So I just kind of see, like, Yusuke having this fusion buff just to kind of make sure that we have another fusion buffer in Heroes of Time. And maybe for newer players um, that just started now and they can pull Yusuke, they can say they have a Hero of Time uh, faction buffer. But I'm still going to stick with Joshua's. Um, and right now I'm running a mixed team. Maybe this will change if if I get the rest of the Yu Yu Hakusho characters. I will have to see. But for now, um, at least Kurama benefits from Joshua's faction buff a little bit. And that's what I'm playing around with right now. So I just wanted to let you guys know where your boy's at. This is where uh, my, my Yurameshi's at. I had him at like 5.5k and, and then I started playing around with different builds. And same thing with Kurama, who is a 4-star now. He's at 5.5k. So once I figure out a few things, I will let you guys know what my official word on them is. But right now, it's looking pretty amazing. So far, everything I've tested works the way it's supposed to work. There's no hiccups. I just really love uh, like this force field that Kurama can put up around him. Um, I also think it can be useful in PvP because it's... It gives you something that your opponent has to keep track of and kind of count out. And um, I feel like when you put your opponent in a situation like that, that's when mistakes can be made. So he could be a very interesting character. Um, definitely took me by surprise. I didn't know if they were going to build him like this. Like, they made Kurama a mage. And now that I look back at Yu Hakusho in the anime, and I'm like, okay, you know, I could see Kurama being some kind of crazy flower mage um, so that's pretty cool um, made me look at Yu Yu Hakusho in a slightly different perspective and that's pretty cool so can't wait for the rest of the characters and this is what I think of them so far extremely happy can't, and I can't wait to play through the event it's gonna be awesome not, not gonna be skipping a damn thing I'm gonna be reading through all of that I really wanna see what kind of event they have cooked up for us and then um, hopefully, hopefully when that next banner drops, I can get my favorite little assassin with all the eyeballs. You guys know who I'm talking about. If you want to, leave his name in the comments, and hopefully he'll be the first one I pull. If I pull any of them at all, please, Mobile Gamers Unite, I'm out. Wish you all the best of luck, and I hope it reciprocates. Peace, everybody.